with that, we'll be glad to open it up for questions. Arch. Well, we're, we're, you know, as you know, been steady working on that. Uh, we passed the largest state income tax cut in state history. We have a lot of other tax benefits in our state that benefit our farmers and our producers, our certain other industries like film and manufacturing. But I, I think I can speak for this group behind me. We are all committed to continuing to cut our state income tax and stay tuned for the second Monday in January. Well, the thing about what we're doing today, this, will, this funding will be uh, done through the amended budget. So this is one-time money. Uh, this is not something that will, um, you know, go on in perpetuity that we'll have to pay for the next year and the next year after that. This will be a one-time move that we're making to send money back to the folks that sent it to us. And we didn't need it all, so we're going to send it back to you. Uh, I, I know we're committed to continuing to cut taxes, but this is a way for us to use our excess surplus and get it back in the hands uh, of the people that we believe not, that know how to spend it the best. And that is our hardworking families that send us those tax dollars to start with. And, you know, like I said in my remarks and the other legislative leaders have talked about, uh, we've experienced 40-year high inflation over the last couple of years. And even though inflation is starting to level out, costs are still high. If you're trying to buy your kids a meal or take them out to eat or go buy groceries or deal with rent that's increased, insurance costs that have gone up, car payments are going up, the cost of cars are going up, all these things, uh, you know, having an extra $500 in the pocket of hardworking Georgia families allow them to deal with credit card debt or just help them um, with their expenses on, on everyday life. Well, we're going to continue to work with the partners that you see standing with me today. This is just one of the things that we're working on. We've got a long way to go to January. I think if you look back at how we used one-time money from excess reserves that we have because of fiscally conservative budgeting while funding our priorities like teacher pay raises, law enforcement pay raises. Uh, as I mentioned here, we've given or saved Georgia taxpayers over $6.6 .6 billion already. We put an additional $1.6 billion into our transportation and infrastructure and freight and logistics network last year. Uh, and we've spent in a lot of one-time uh, funds to make state government more efficient and do things that we'll get generational benefit out of. Uh, the worst mistake we could make would be to grow government with one-time money. Because like you're seeing now with the federal government that gave everybody and their brother federal money uh, during the pandemic, new programs got created. Now the feds are cut, cutting the money off and everybody's screaming, you know, you're cutting my budget. I can't fund my program. And we're not going to do that to the taxpayers of this state. We're not going to do that to future legislators or to future governors. We're going to continue to be fiscally conservative. But the reason we are here today is because you taxpayers that are out there watching this, we trust you better than the government to have this money back in your pocket. And we're going to continue to look for ways to do that. just say, you know, from my perspective with FEMA uh, here in the state, from what I know, they were embedded with us a couple of days before the hurricane. We've had a great working relationship with them. We all, I mean, we had issues originally when we only had 11 counties that were declared in the federal um, emergency disaster relief efforts. Uh, but, I, you know, I made well known now, I made a call to the White House to the administrator, and that was rectified. We've continued to work uh, with them. Uh, but let me just also say, I am so proud of our uh, state response to this. Uh, we have a great team. They were ready when this storm came. They literally, not only our folks 
uh, but our private sector partners, our utilities and other contractors we have, uh, um, you know, non-government agencies like the Red Cross and all our state assets that were moving in literally right after the storm. Uh, this was a massive storm. A lot of people don't really understand how big this storm was. Georgia Power previously in their worst storm ever in our state had to replace 1,700 power poles. This storm they had to replace over 8,000. This was like a 200 mile tornado that went through our state uh, that was actually a hurricane, uh, unprecedented uh, cat two hitting our state and remaining a cat one for as long as it did. And as much devastation as we saw and as much work that we have done and have to do, uh, the people of our state know that the people behind me, our first responders, our state agencies, working with our federal partners, the folks on the ground from our local communities and our local emergency managers, they knew that everybody out there was given every, that everything that they could, and we're committed to continuing to do that as we recover, especially from Hurricane Helene. There definitely is. I would say this. We, we continue to work with all these partners behind me, the legislative leadership on, on what we're doing. Uh, I had a meeting this morning with our budget director, Rick Dunn, and his team. They're looking at, you know, what we did for Hurricane Michael, um, looking at ideas that we're hearing from people on the ground. And so we're starting to dig into that now. I will say the one good thing about the position we're in versus when Michael hit is our fund balances are so much better than they were back then. Uh, so we have a lot more flexibility uh, with money that we have in certain places to help us get through to where we can get the legislature back in. And I, and I can assure you, I, I think everybody, I can speak for everybody up here, but uh, we look to move quickly the first part of the legislative session uh, on storm packages. And uh, as a matter of fact, today we took action in the State Properties Commission on a lease for a uh, a tower for uh, a news agency down in Savannah that lost their tower. So we're going to allow them to lease uh, Georgia Public Broadcasting Tower. I mean, we approved that today. So in a lot of ways, we're already working on things to try to be helpful. We'll continue to do that. Thank you all very much for being here.